But good morning and happy Easter to everyone. Today we celebrate. We celebrate our risen Lord. We celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. We celebrate that our Lord conquered death on a cross. Today we celebrate Jesus. The life, the ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus are important to each of us. They make it possible for us to have eternal life through triumphal entrance. So today... On this Easter Sunday, we celebrate. We entered into each Sunday during Lent, turning our face again towards God, open to hear the message of God to each of us, noticing what God is trying to show us. Today, let us reflect back on the impact of that first Easter and those who were closest to Jesus on that day. And how that affects us today. Please pray with me. Good and gracious God, you have walked with us on this journey. We have witnessed the love that you offer to the people and remember the miracles that took place. We gather today on this day in a place filled with candles, flowers, where music soars and spirits are lifted in joy. Be with us again, reminding us that the journey to the cross doesn't end in death, but becomes a road of joy. Lift our hearts and our spirits. Amen. Psalm 118 is a processional hymn or psalm, and it helps the people of God remember their deliverance from danger and reminds them to give thanks. The psalm leads the reader through a powerful experience that directs their attention to the psalmist's conviction that salvation belongs to God alone, and the proper response is to say thank you. This psalm becomes our own prayer of thanksgiving, for in so far as we are found in Christ, dying and rising again with him, The psalm lends language and shape to our expressions of joy and gratitude for what God has done for each of us through Jesus Christ. The Lord is my strength and my might. The Lord has become my salvation. This psalm not only provides an interpretive lens for Christ's death and resurrection, but it reminds us that we can live eternally through God's many mighty acts done on our behalf. We are reminded throughout this psalm to exalt the Lord, to offer our praises to our God. In the context of Easter, praise is particularly crucial. We live in a world which increasingly looks for salvation from evil, in the building of walls, the carrying of weapons, and the hoarding of resources. Therefore, as people of God, it is our responsibility to seek out salvation in other ways, ways that are rooted in hope that we have found in Jesus. To remember that we live in a world where a resurrection really did happen. That we live in a world where God really is on the move, redeeming and restoring this world through Jesus. That we live in a world where Christ's kingdom work has taken root in our hearts and that calls us into new ways of living and of being. As Easter people, we are called to bring people back to the God who loves us, who loves all people whose steadfast love endures forever, who is at work in our lives and in the world making all things new, who alone is our hope and our salvation. Let us remember those opening words of that psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. This brings us now to our Easter story to the story of the resurrection of Jesus. 
When you ask kids what Easter means to them, you likely get a myriad of different answers, ranging from bunnies and eggs to a detailed account of Holy Week leading up to Jesus' resurrection. All that they offer is valid, and all that they offer is important to take note. What I find most fascinating about children's answers is their honesty and their humility in their answers. In some cases, children, through their very innocence, have the tendency to articulate what it means better than some adults. As I remember back to some of my earliest memories of Easter, there are several things that are immediately coming to mind. I remember that every year we would get a new Easter dress. It was a fond memory because it was something special. It was a special treat to pick out something for Easter. And it also emphasized the importance of that day, the importance of Easter in our family and in our church. As a child, I also remember hearing the jubilee of the trumpets and brass instruments as we would sing with gusto the song, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. I have fond memories of the choir singing Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. What a powerful piece of music, made even more powerful by a full choir and the addition of those in the congregation who knew the song and wanted to join in and were welcome to join in nonetheless. I also remember and cherish time spent together with family and with friends every Easter. We didn't have extended family here in Colorado. So for our Easter meal, there were two other families who also didn't have extended family. And for as long as I can remember, we gathered at rotating houses for Easter dinner every year. It was something that made us family. We were family because we cared, not because we shared any DNA. Through all of these memories, all of them are linked to Easter. All of them are a reminder of the importance of sharing the Easter story. Easter story is a story of love. It's a story of love given for each and every person. A story that is shared for all people to know. One of the amazing things about Jesus is that his life and his ministry served as an example of how we can live and serve in our communities yet today. Indeed, Jesus did come that we might live abundantly through him and likewise also love abundantly because we were first loved by God. As we celebrate Jesus' resurrection and all that it means to each of us, may we continue to remember to live our lives, both individually, as a church, as a community, led by the example of love and of generosity given to us by God. In our gospel lesson from Matthew, we read of Jesus' resurrection, and we read of a couple of women who have come to the tomb. They've come to see the tomb, to see where Jesus had been laid. These women have not come to do anything, according to this reading, but simply have come to see the tomb. They come waiting and watching and with great anticipation. These are the women who have followed Jesus and were there for Jesus' final breaths at the cross and are now at the tomb. They are the women who have watched the crucifixion from afar and sat opposite of that tomb where Jesus is laid. These are the women who arrive as the first day of the week is dawning to see this tomb. And when they arrive at the tomb, the earth begins to quake 
An angel descends from heaven, rolls back that stone, and reveals the empty tomb. That angel sits on that stone. The guards who were there were terrified. They fell down as if they were dead. But not these two women. They stood there in awe of what was happening. They hear the message from the angel that tells them that Jesus, who was crucified, has been raised and is no longer there. The anticipation and and expectancy that they came there with is replaced with joy and excitement of seeing Jesus. The women came to the tomb to see and were able to go from that tomb knowing more than they thought they ever would. And with that knowledge, they could now go and tell the disciples what had happened and where they were to go next. These women were given an important message, a message from an angel, a message that they are to carry to the disciples, the message that Jesus had not only raised from the dead, but also that he had gone ahead of them to Galilee, where they would see him again. Upon hearing this message, these women, filled with fear and also great joy, set out immediately. However, before they got too far, who did they run smack dab into? Jesus. Before he got to Galilee, before he got there to meet the disciples, he ran into these two women, and they knew immediately who he was. And rather than say anything, they began to worship him right there because they knew that that was Jesus. Throughout this entire experience, we never hear a word from either of these women. But rather, the story is focused on what they do. The women follow. The women watch. The women wait. The women go in order to see. They listen. And they worship. When the women are told to go tell the disciples where they have been hiding, that they must go before to Galilee to see Jesus, The women go quickly to carry out this task. These women, who were once filled with anticipation, are now filled with the greatest of joy. They came to the tomb to determine what was next, and then set out to do exactly what they were told. These women were some of the very first Easter people ready to spread the good news of Jesus to all whom they met. Today, on Easter Sunday, as Easter people, may we each take a look at our lives and notice where God can use us to share the good news. The resurrection of Jesus was a new beginning for these women, for these disciples, just as it can be for all of us today. All we have to do is open our eyes and pay attention to where and what God is leading us to do. Jesus died for the forgiveness of all of our sins, yours, mine, everybody's. Jesus also died so that we could have life and have it abundantly. What are things in your life that could use a renewal or a restart? Give those to God. Allow God to work through you to share the good news. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen.